Aloha and Namaste. I'm Nikki Doan and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to this channel for all kinds of amazing yoga videos, practices, tutorials, and general information on all things yoga. So today the practice is going to focus on lunges and hip openers. So this is kind of a strong practice and you'll need a few props. You're going to need a yoga mat, a blanket, a belt, a block, and a bolster. Okay, so get all that stuff together and then come find a seat on your mat. Fold your blanket. I'm sitting on one blanket folded and basically what you want is you want to be in a seated position where your hips are higher than your knees. Okay, that's pretty important. What that does is it takes the pressure out of your lower back and helps you sit up. So go ahead and sit up nice and tall. Find the seat that serves you best and then please join your hands together in front of your heart. Now we're going to start with a mantra which is kind of like a prayer and this is called the Shantipop mantra. I start all my classes with this and it's the prayer for peace. Now, if you're comfortable, I'm going to set this up in such a way that you'll do call and response. So I'll say a line and you can say it back at home. If you're not comfortable with the chanting, just listen. You'll get a lot out of the chanting even if you don't respond. Okay? So sit up nice and tall. Lower your chin towards your chest. Release the back of your neck. Look down at your hands and take a moment here and set an intention for your practice. Now, close your eyes and bring your attention to your breath. So just breathe through your nose, nice and smooth, in through your nose, out through your nose. Soften your jaw, your teeth, your tongue. And we'll start chanting three ohms together. So go ahead and exhale all your air, breathe out. Pause. Inhale. Oh. 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 Vava tu Sahanao Bunak tu Sahaviryam Karvavahai Tejasvinav Adi Tamastu Mavid Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 It's with our words coupled with our intention that we breathe life into the mantra. So here we ask, first, may all beings everywhere feel safe and protected. Secondly, may all beings feel nourished, fed, and satisfied. As we come together in this moment and in all moments, may we work with courage, with strength, and determination so that everything we do in our lives can and will continue to brighten and most of all whatever we do may it be effective in helping us feel more free and lastly but certainly not least let us not bring hatred nor dispute amongst each other and certainly not amongst systems of yoga om peace 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 Let's begin with the marmas. Sit up tall. Go ahead and place your hands on your legs. 
Lengthen your spine, and as you exhale, tilt your head to the right. Bring your right ear towards your right shoulder. Take a few breaths here. Keep your sitting bones evenly weighted, and then inhale. Raise your head and exhale to the left. So keep your ear in line with your shoulder. Breathe into the right side of your neck, and now we'll go back and forth. Inhale up. Exhale, tilt your head to the right. Inhale, lift your head. Exhale to the left. Keep breathing through your nose. Inhale, head up. And exhale slowly to the right. One more time. Inhale, lift your head. And exhale to the left. Good. Now inhale, raise your head to the center. And exhale, bring your chin towards your chest. Release the back of your neck. Inhale, head up. Keep your chest lifted and exhale, let your head go back. Stretch your chin, inhale, raise your head, exhale, bring it forward, keep your chest lifted. Now again, inhale, raise your head, and as you exhale, take your head back, stretch your chin, lengthen the front of your throat, inhale, head up, again, exhale forward, inhale to lift your head, exhale as your head goes back, squeeze your shoulder blades, lift your sternum, and inhale, lift your head, exhale, bring it forward, pause. Now on the inhale, start rolling your head to the right, to the back, to the left, to the front. Keep going in a circle. Continue to breathe through your nose. Keep your sitting bones evenly weighted. Soften your jaw, your teeth, your tongue, your lips. Pay attention to any little pops or clicks you might be hearing or feeling. Now the next time your chin comes to your chest, pause and then roll the other way, to the left, to the back, to the right, to the front. Notice if you feel or hear anything different when you're rolling to the left. Again, keep your sitting bones evenly weighted, soften your jaw and breathe through your nose. Now the next time your chin comes to your chest, stop, lift your head and let's do the shoulders. So sit up tall, Lift your shoulders up, bring them forward, down, and back, and continue. Roll your shoulders in circles towards the front of your mat. Keep your spine lifted and keep your hands still. So your shoulders are going to move, your arms, your elbows, and then roll them the other way. So when you roll them backwards, feel how your shoulders are a part of your back body. Awesome. Now, Let's do the Vajrasanas. So that's the footwork. So come on your knees. The first Vajrasana, you curl your toes under, check your feet, bring them together, have your inner ankle bones touch each other, and sit back on your heels. If this bothers your knees, then you're going to put something like a blanket between your butt and your heels. If you don't have any pain in your knees, then you don't need the blanket. Now rest your hands on your thighs, lower your chin towards your chest, and breathe. So here the pelvis tucks under a little, and by dropping your chest, it's going to bring more weight into your feet. So do the best that you can do. Remember, if this is too much weight in your feet, if it's a new pose, you could put your hands on blocks on either side of your hips. Just breathe into your back body, soften your jaw, and as always, watch the reaction. Watch if your jaw's getting tight. Watch if you're scrunching up your face, right? and see if you can keep breathing through your nose. Good. Come forward, lift your bottom, point your toes straight back. Keep your heels together, and you may need your fingers at your outer heels to do that. Get in between your sitting bones and sit back. Again, rest your hands on your knees, round your back, and lower your chin towards your chest. Breathe into your back body. So feel as though you could inflate your kidneys with your breath. I always imagine my kidneys are like little balloons. Right? With every inhale, I can broaden them. So soften your mouth, your teeth, your tongue. These poses are great for stretching the feet, bringing more flexibility into the bottom and the tops of your feet. Very useful for everything. Right? Now, go ahead and inhale, lift your head. Come forward. We're going to do it again. This time we'll add an arm position. So curl your toes under, inner ankle bones together. Sit back and now stretch your arms out in front of you. Crush your right over your left. Bend both elbows and turn your palms to face each other. And you'll be able to see your right arm is higher than your left. Close the fingers on your hand. 
Spread the skin on your palms and lift your elbows up. Try to get your elbows as high as your shoulders and press both shoulders down away from your ears. If your neck feels okay, look up at your fingertips and press your hands away from your face. Breathe. And breathe through your nose. If that bothers your neck to look up, then don't do it. And now, just stay in the pose. Soften your mouth, your teeth, your tongue. Slowly lower your head. Release your arms. Shake them out. Now let's do the second Vajrasana for the other side. Point your toes straight back. Sit back at your heels between your sitting bones. And now stretch your arms forward. Cross your left over your right. Bend both elbows and again, turn your hands so your palms face each other. Your left hand is higher than your right. Close the fingers on your hands so they touch. Spread the skin on your palms. Lift your elbows up. Try to get them as high as your shoulders and press both shoulders down. Then press your hands away from your face. And again, if your neck can handle it, if it feels okay, let your head go back and look up beyond your fingertips. So this is the arm position of Garudasana, which is the eagle pose. Very nice. Go ahead and release. Shake out your arms. Uttanasana. Lean forward. Curl your toes under. Straighten your legs. Walk your hands back to your feet. And if you can, uh, straighten your legs and up you come. Now let's get a block. Okay. So get a block and put it on the floor in front of your feet, about a foot in front. So even if you're flexible, do this. So bring your feet together, place your hands on the block, and as you can see, you want to be in alignment where your sitting bones are over your heels. So your arms are straight, no matter how flexible you are. Look at your feet, lift all ten toes, activate your quadriceps, spin your thighs towards each other, and then lift your chest and look forward. So be sensitive to your neck. Good. If you can, put the block on its lower setting. Keep your legs straight so your quadriceps engage. Keep breathing through your nose. Look at your knees. So you kind of look to do the vigilance, right? To check that you're doing what they're doing, what you want them to be doing. And then look forward. So lift your chest. Lift your chin. And be sensitive to your neck. Now the last variation, if you can, put your hands flat on the floor. And notice when you do that, did you lean back? See if you can keep that alignment where your sitting bones are over your heels. Have your arms straight, palms flat on the floor, or the blocks, right? Now, if you can, take the back of your legs and fold in. Bring your forehead towards your shins. Breathe into your back body. Lift your kneecaps. Press down through your feet. And breathe. Open your eyes. Soften your jaw. Stay here. Good. Inhale. Lift your head. Exhale right there. Now, squat down. Malasana. So you're going to separate your feet about hips width. Turn your feet out. Have your toes, your feet in line with your knees. Now take the block and put it between your feet in front of you on its highest setting and lean forward. Place your forehead on the block. You can hold the block. That kind of feels nice. But let your forehead rest. And the point at which uh, you're pressing, it's right between your eyebrows. So that's our third eye. Feel the block grab that skin. And you're stretching in such a manner that you feel the skin uh, stretching up towards the top of your forehead. It feels really nice because we tend to hold a lot of tension right between our eyebrows. So use this pose to take the creases out from between your eyebrows and keep breathing. Soften your jaw, your teeth, your tongue, your lips. Keep breathing through your nose. This is really good for your hips. Now, lift your head, move the block, put your hands on the floor, Uttanasana, head down, straighten your legs and parallel your feet. Walk them together. So Uttanasana is the intense posture. If you can fold in and put your forehead on your shins, do that. Keep your eyes open and straighten your legs. If your hands don't reach the floor, of course, use a block. And keep breathing. Lift your kneecaps up. Internally rotate your thighs. Now, inhale, lift your head. And now, bend your knees and roll on up to standing. 
Utita Trikonasana, that's triangle pose. So take your block and stand in the middle of your mat, separate your feet nice and wide, at least the length of one of your legs, if not longer. Turn your right foot to the right, left heel to the left, and place the block on the little toe side of your foot on its highest setting, somewhere between your ankle and your knee. Now look at your feet, keep the weight on the big toe side of your right foot, the little toe side of your left foot, Lift your kneecaps, then lift your arms to the height of your shoulders and exhale as you shift your hips to the left. Reach out through your right arm, place your right hand on the block and put your left hand on your hip. Look down, activate your quadriceps. So you wanna roll your right leg, externally rotate it. So your kneecap starts to point towards your little baby toe and you kinda of keep checking that. Keep the weight on the big toe side of your foot, and if you feel stable, stretch your left arm straight up. Lift your right ear away from your right shoulder and breathe. Now, if that doesn't feel stable, of course, you keep your hand on your hip. Bring your chin towards your chest now. Turn your head to the left. Look up at your thumb. Take a deep inhale and exhale, release. Look down, left hand to your hip. Take the block. Bend your right leg and inhale to come up. Switch sides. Turn your right foot in and your left foot out. Place the block on the little toe side of your left foot. Start with your hands on your hips and again check. The alignment of your legs should be heel to heel and the distance between them about the length of one of your own legs. Take a deep inhale, lift your arms and exhale, over you go. Put your left hand on the block and your right hand on your hip. Look down and make sure that your left wrist is under your left shoulder. Think of the block as an extension of your arm. And then keep the weight on the big toe side of your left foot, the little toe side of your right foot. Activate your quadriceps and externally rotate your legs. Now roll your right elbow and shoulder back, lean back. If you feel stable, stretch your right arm straight up. And lift your left ear away from your left shoulder. Contain and control your skull. Keep breathing through your nose and you're constantly checking. All right, feel the weight, big toe side of your left foot, little toe side of your right foot. Activate your legs, and now to come out, right hand to your hip, bend your left leg, take the block, inhale, up you come, and exhale, switch sides, Parjvottanasana. Shorten your stance a little, and take your block and put it in front of your right foot. Have your hands on your hips, take a nice deep inhale, look up, and exhale, bend forward. This time put your hands on the block. So now your hands are gonna be in front of your foot. Look down at your right foot, lift all five toes, spread your big toe to the left, little toe to the right, keep the weight on the big toe side of your foot, lift your right kneecap, draw your right hip back. Okay, so your right sitting bone moves closer to your left, and if you can, lower the block. Okay. If your leg bends when you lower the block, don't lower the block. You only lower it as long as you can keep your legs straight. Now press into your back heel, lift your chest, see if you can bring your left hip forward, straighten your knees and breathe. Look forward if you can, as always be sensitive to your neck. Now if you can, take your hands off the block, reach back, inhale and exhale, bring your forehead to your shin. Good, inhale, lift your head, bend your right leg, come on up and switch sides. Turn your right foot in, left foot out. Place the block on its highest setting in front of your left foot. Take your hands to your hips, straighten both knees, lean back like you're doing a back bend. Inhale, lift your chest and exhale as you come forward. Keep your spine extended and bring your hands to the block. So first variation, arms and legs are straight. Hands on the block on its highest setting. Look down at your left foot, keep the weight on the big toe side of your left foot, little toe side of your right foot. Activate your quadriceps, draw your left hip back and your right hip forward. Lift your chest and look forward as long as your neck feels okay. So keep breathing. Now if you can, take the block to a lower setting. I like to have my wrists parallel to each other. It feels better on my wrists. Straighten your legs. And again, lead with your sternum. Lengthen your chest. Draw your shoulders back away from your ears. And if you can look forward, do that. Keep breathing. Now for the last variation, take your hands off the block and bend forward. Bring your forehead to your shin. Keep breathing. 
Inhale, lift your head, take the block, bend your left leg, inhale, up you come, and switch sides for Padavrita, revolved triangle. This time put the block on the big toe side of your right foot, take your hands to your hips, check the alignment, straighten both legs, and okay, now you're going to really use your back leg, press into your left heel, inhale, raise your left arm, and exhale as you bend forward, bring your left hand to the block, and look at the block, make sure your wrist is under your shoulder. Okay. Now, straighten your right leg, take a deep inhalation and exhale as you twist to the right. Keep your right hand on your hip, draw your right hip back, left hip forward, and if you feel stable, stretch your right arm straight up. You're looking to the right, lift your left ear away from your left shoulder, activate your quadriceps any amount. It's still a straight leg standing pose. Keep the weight on the big toe side of your right foot and the little toe side of your left foot. And in the last breath, look up at your right thumb. Very nice. Look down, right hand to your waist. Take hold of the block. Inhale, up you come, and exhale, switch sides. Turn your right foot and left foot out. Place the block on the big toe side of your left foot. Start with your hands on your hips. Check the alignment, heel to heel. Straighten both legs, and now as you press into your back heel, inhale, lift your right arm, and exhale, come forward with all that length, put your right hand on the block, and again, make sure that once your spine is extended, your right wrist is under your right shoulder, and that's where the block should be. Then inhale, lift your chest, and exhale, twist to your left. You could always take your left thumb into the crease at the top of your left thigh and roll the skin back. Lengthen your spine. So inhale as you lift your chest, exhale to twist. And if you feel stable, stretch your left arm straight up. You're looking to the left. Keep the weight on the big toe side of your left foot, the little toe side of your right foot. Activate your quadriceps. And now inhale, look up. Take a nice deep breath as you exhale, release. Look down, take the block, up you come. Parallel your feet and walk your feet together. Put the block down and come stand at the top of your mat. Samastitihi. And so this is the pose that we start in for Surya Namaskar. Just take a moment here, join your palms, close your eyes, drop your shoulders away from your ears, get steady. Now bring your arms to your side, open your eyes and begin. On an inhale, raise your arms up and over your head, look up, palms meet. Exhale, open your arms and bend forward. Bring your head towards your legs. Trini, inhale, lift your head to lengthen your spine. Exhale, bend your knees, plant your hands, step back, bend your elbows, look forward, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale into upward dog, use your legs. Exhale to downward facing dog. And then check your hands, just look at them. They should be shoulder width apart. Go ahead and do that bicycle kick thing, bend your knees slowly deliberately. Try not to wiggle your hips too much. Make this about your lower legs and then stop doing the bicycle kick. Straighten both legs. Lift your kneecaps. Lift all ten of your toes to wake up your legs. As you inhale, feel like you're pushing the front of your mat away from you. As you exhale, press back into your legs. Keep breathing. Good. Now complete your exhale. Look up. Inhale as you step or walk, both your feet to your hands, bring your feet together, look up. Exhale as you fold in, head towards your legs, and then with your heels grounded, inhale, come all the way up, look up, hands meet. Exhale, float your arms to your side. With your feet together, again, inhale, yakam, raise your arms up and over your head, look up, and dway as the exhale over you go, let your head come down last. Inhale, lift your head to lengthen your spine. Now keep your head up. Exhale, bend your knees, plant your hands, step back, bend your elbows, look forward, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale into upward dog, stretch your legs, roll your shoulders back, look up, and exhale, let your head come through last to downward facing dog. So let your head hang. The traditional gazing point or drishti of this pose is your navel. Now you won't see your navel, but it's a great direction to look towards. It keeps the back of your neck long, and it reminds your ribs to move towards your spine so that you can open your armpit chest. Now keep breathing through your nose, wake up your legs. So with every inhale, stretch your arms. With every exhale, press back into your legs and breathe. 
ujjayi breathing. Now complete your exhale, look up. Inhale, step or walk, both feet to your hands, look up. Exhale as you fold in, feet together. And inhale, come all the way up, stretch your arms up, look up, palms meet. And exhale, samastitihi, bring your arms to your side. Again, inhale, raise your arms up and over your head, look up. Exhale, over you go, let your head come down last. Trini, inhale, lift your head to lengthen your spine. Chatwari, exhale into Chaturanga Dandasana, squeeze your elbows to your ribs. Inhale into upward facing dog, use your legs. Exhale to downward facing dog and breathe. Free breathing means keep breathing. So the inhale follows the exhale. The exhale follows the inhale. Make your breath continuous, smooth, soften your jaw, and stay in the pose. If you need to take a rest at any time, child's pose is available. Now look forward. Inhale, step or walk both feet to your hands. Lift your head up. And exhale as you fold in, head towards your legs. Grounding through your heels, inhale, come all the way up, reach up, look up. Exhale, float your arms to your side. Now, we're going to do it again and add those standing poses. So, it's like Surya Namaskar C, that's what I call it. Inhale, raise your arms up, look up. Exhale, over you go, let your head come down last. Deep inhale, lift your head, keep it up. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana, keep your body strong, look forward. Inhale, Pancha, that's upward dog, look up. Exhale to downward facing dog. Now, take a nice deep inhale, come up on your tippy toes, step your right foot forward into triangle pose. Use the block, put it behind your right leg, straighten your legs and raise your left arm up if you feel stable. Keep breathing. So straighten your legs. Soften your jaw. Keep the weight on the big toe side of your right foot, the little toe side of your back foot. Activate your quadriceps. Look straight ahead. Lift your right ear away from your right shoulder. And now Parjvottanasana. Hop your back foot forward. Straighten both legs. Nice deep inhale. If you need the block in front of you, put your hands on the block. Straighten your legs. Breathe through your nose. If you can, turn your hands around, walk your fingers towards your back foot, and bring your forehead to your shin. Straighten your legs. Draw your outer right hip back. Right sitting bone closer to your left. And now from here, Padavrita Trikonasana. Lift your head. Take the block. Put it on the big toe side of your right foot. Put your left hand on the block. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, twist to the right, and stretch your right arm straight up. So this is a balance pose. Keep the weight in your feet consistent. Big toe side of your right foot, little toe side of your left foot. Activate your quadriceps, soften your jaw, your teeth, your tongue, and now look down. Move the block, plant your hands and step back, bend your elbows, Chaturanga Dandasana, look forward, nice deep inhale into upward dog, stretch your legs, exhale to downward facing dog. Take a breath or two here. And then inhale, step your left foot forward into triangle pose. If you like the block, use the block. You could always just put your left hand on your leg, right hand on your hip, straighten your legs, and if you like, stretch your right arm straight up. Look to the sides, you're looking straight ahead. Lift your left ear away from your left shoulder, straighten your legs and breathe. So in order to stretch your hamstrings, the stiff back of your legs, you must engage your quadriceps. Lift your kneecaps and breathe. Good. Parjvottanasana. Bring your hands to the floor. Hop your back foot forward. Inhale, look up. And exhale, fold in. Bring your forehead to your shin. If you want, turn your hands around. Straighten your arms. Remember, if this is difficult, if you can't keep your legs straight and put your hands on the floor, then use the block. Straighten your knees and soften your jaw. Breathe through your nose. Activate your quadriceps. Keep the weight on the big toe side of your left foot, the little toe side of your right foot. And now inhale, lift your head, hands to either side of your foot, revolve triangle. Put your left hand on your hip, 
Nice deep inhale, lift your chest, exhale, twist to the left. Press your right hand down, stretch your left arm up, and look to the side. If that doesn't feel stable, keep your left hand on your hip. Straighten your legs and breathe. So this is a balance pose, a little harder here. If you want to look up, look up. Just keep your feet weighted. Awesome. Now look down, move the block, set your hands, and on an exhale, step back, Chaturanga Dandasana, look forward. Inhale into upward facing dog, look up, lift your chest. Exhale to downward facing dog. Very nice. And breathe. There's your inhale, stretch your arms. As you exhale, press back into your legs. Good. Look up and inhale, step or walk, both feet to your hands, bring your feet together, look up. Exhale as you fold in, head towards your legs. Inhale, come all the way up, look up, bring your palms together, and exhale, hands to your side. With your feet together, take a few breaths here, stand up nice and tall, feel your feet, look down at your feet, bring them together so your big toes touch, and the next pose is Utkatasana, bend your knees as you raise your arms up, look up, bring your palms together, and let your head go back, so your gaze is up. Press your palms against each other. Your sitting bones move back. Keep your knees and your feet together. Stretch your arms up and breathe. Slowly bring your chest to your thighs. Take your hands to the floor. Straighten your legs. Uttanasana, the intense posture. Straighten your knees. Soften your jaw. Activate your quadriceps, spin your thighs towards each other. Keep your sitting bones over your heels so you're leaning a little forward without your heels coming off the floor. And now inhale, lift your head. Let's go back to Utkatasana. Bend your knees and inhale, raise your arms up. Utkatasana, the intense, powerful, fierce pose. And exhale, straighten your legs, take your arms to your side. Surya Namaskar B. Bend your knees, inhale, reach up, Utkatasana, look up, and exhale, over you go. Straighten your knees, hands to the floor. Inhale, lift your head, keep it up. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana, squeeze your elbows to your ribs. Inhale into upward dog, point your toes. Exhale to downward facing dog. Now, step your right foot forward, bend your right knee, plant your back heel. Raise your arms up and over your head for Virabhadrasana A. Look up. Breathe through your nose. Stretch your back leg. Press into your front heel for stability and exhale. Release. Lean forward. Plant your hands. Step back. Bend your elbows. Chatwari position. Inhale into upward dog and exhale to downward dog. Good. Left foot forward. Step it way forward. Bend your left knee. Plant your back heel. And raise both arms up and over your head. Palms together and your head goes back. So the hands come together. There's significance in that. Draw your belly in and up and exhale, release. Hands to the floor, step back. Bend your elbows, look forward. Then inhale into upward facing dog, look up. Exhale to downward facing dog. Now check your hands. Make sure they're your shoulder width apart and then lower your head. Check that your feet or your hips width apart. So whenever we're doing Surya Namaskar B, we take our hands off the floor several times before coming into Downward Dog, which means the likelihood of them moving around or being out of alignment is high. So just check. Right? Now, here we go. Look up. Inhale, step or walk both feet to your hands. Look up, feet together. Exhale as you fold in. And now bend your knees. Inhale, reach up for Utkatasana, look up. Exhale, straighten your legs, hands to your side, Samastitihi. Let's do it again. Inhale, bend your knees and raise your arms up and over your head, Utkatasana. Dwe, exhale, bring your chest to your thighs, straighten your legs, drop your head. Trini, inhale, lift your head to lengthen your spine. Exhale, plant your hands, step back, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Right foot, step it forward. Bend your right knee and inhale, Warrior One. Look up. 
Exhale, plant your hands, step back, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale into upward dog, use your legs. Exhale to downward facing dog. Left foot, bend your left knee, straighten your back leg, reach up, warrior one. Exhale, take it all the way down. Step back, bend your elbows, look forward. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale to downward facing dog. And breathe. Check your hands. Keep breathing through your nose. Soften your mouth, your teeth, your tongue, your lips. Keep breathing through your nose. Now come up on your tippy toes. Look forward. First lunge. Bend your right knee to about 90 degrees and straighten your back leg. Good. Put your hands on either side of your front foot and see if you can make your hands pretty light. Okay. In fact, take your hands off the floor, get your belly off your thigh, and put your hands down lightly. Straighten your back leg as much as you can. Shift your hips to the left towards your straight leg and keep breathing. So this first one, very little weight in your hands. Press your right foot into the floor. Keep breathing through your nose. And now we're going to go right into the second lunge. So take your right arm to the inside of your right leg. Okay, take your right arm to the inside of your right leg. In fact, move your right foot a little to the right. So now your arms and your torso are inside your right leg. Now check your wrist. There should be no pain in your wrist. Modify if needed. Check the alignment of your right leg. Your right sitting bone is the height of your right knee. And then shift your hips to the left. Now if your wrists are bothering you, you can put your hands on a block. A lot of people like that. It gives them a little more leverage to stretch their back leg. Because these, so, these twists, excuse me, they're not twists, these um, lunges are for the psoas, for your back leg. Now put your hands flat, inhale, lift your hips, and exhale, step back to downward facing dog. Take a couple breaths here. Inhale, stretch your arms, exhale, go back into your legs, and now let's do the other side. So come way up on your tippy toes, and on an inhale, step your left foot forward between your hands. Bend your left leg to about 90 degrees, straighten your back leg, and now look down at your left foot, make the outside edge of your foot roughly parallel with the long side of your mat, lift all five toes, spread your big toe to the right, your little toe to the left, use your fingers if you need to, and then shift your hips to the right, left sitting bone closer to the right, and your hands are very light here. And so they're not weight-bearing. Feel like you're pushing your left foot into the mat to keep your hands light and your hips buoyant. Keep breathing through your nose. Soften your jaw. And now, second lunge. Take your left arm to the inside of your left leg. Move your left foot a little to the left, and if you need to, walk your hands a little to the right. Check your wrists. Make sure there's no pressure in your wrists. If you have any pain, modify whether you lift your wrists off the mat or make fists or use the, your hands on the block. Whatever you do, you shouldn't be having pain in your wrists while you're opening your hips. Now, remember, check the alignment. Look between your legs. Make sure your left sitting bone is the height of your left knee. If you're flexible, you might be too low. You're going to have to lift your hips. Then shift your hips to the right towards your straight leg. Put your hands flat. Inhale, lift your hips, and exhale to downward facing dog. Again, nice deep inhale, stretch your arms, stretch your legs, couple of bicycle kicks, and then please look up. Now bring your hands together in the middle of your mat so your thumbs touch. On an inhale, third lunge, step your right big toe to your outer right wrist. As you exhale, bend both knees and bring your back knee to the mat. Look over your left shoulder, check the alignment of your back leg, foot, knee, and hip in a nice straight line. Now take your hands, take the block, and put your hands on the block, so your arms, your torso, the block inside your right leg. Roll your shoulders back, and if this bothers your right knee, turn your foot out. You would pivot on your right heel and turn your foot out. Otherwise, your toes point forward. Keep your right heel down. Roll your shoulders back. Lift your chest. Sink your hips. So the more you can lift your chest, the easier it is to look up. Now, second part, push your right foot into the floor, press the top of your back foot and straighten your back leg like you're doing the best upward dog leg ever. Lift your chest and breathe. And if this bothers your back knee, then you want to put your knee on the floor, curl your toes under, and do it like that. Okay, that's important. Now, 
Move the block out of the way, put your back knee on the mat, and come down onto your elbows. Lower your head. So sink your hips and soften your jaw. If your elbows don't reach the floor, then put a block under your elbows. As you're here, let your head hang, soften your jaw. Bring your attention to your right hip where your leg meets your torso. Soften there. And as long as your toes are pointing forward, squeeze your right knee against your right shoulder. Press your right elbow as firmly as your left and breathe. That's it. Now listen carefully. Staying on your elbows, curl your back toes under. Inhale and exhale, straighten your back knee off the mat. Push into your front heel, lift your hips like two inches, and look forward from your sternum. Soften your fingers, notice if there's tension in your hands, try to relax your hands. Straighten your back leg any amount. Keep breathing through your nose, awesome. Put your back knee on the mat, set your hands, thumbs together. Inhale, lift your hips, exhale, step your right leg back to downward facing dog. And again, take a few breaths here. Inhale, stretch your arms, exhale back into your legs, and now look up for the other side. On an inhale, step your left big toe to your outer left wrist. As you exhale, bend both knees and bring your back knee to the mat. Point your right toes, the back toes straight back, and look over your right shoulder. Don't skip that part. Check the alignment. As soon as you check it, then look at your front foot. Remember, outside edge of the foot in line with the long side of the mat, unless it bothers your knee, then you turn your foot and your knee out. So. Set your left leg according to where your knee's at. And then take the block. I like it on its middle height. Put your hands on the block. Roll your shoulders back. Lift your chest. Sink your hips and breathe. Push into your front heel. Lift your chest up. The more you can lift your chest, the more you can lift your head. And now press the top of your back foot and straighten your back leg. And again, if it bothers your knee, do the back leg with your toes curled under. Otherwise, your back leg is like upward dog. Press the top of your foot, sink your hips, and lift your chest. Look up as long as your neck feels okay. And breathe. Stretch your back leg a lot. And now everybody look down. Put your back knee on the mat. Move the block unless you need it. And come down onto your elbows. If you have a very long torso, you're going to walk your elbows further forward. Okay, now drop your head and just notice where the weight is. Most people on this side, with the left leg forward, feel they have more weight in their right elbow than their left. So to try to find balance, soften your left hip, squeeze your left knee against your left shoulder as long as your knee is pointing forward, and then everybody, press your left elbow as firmly as your right. Keep breathing through your nose, soften your jaw, your teeth, your tongue, and now... We're going to go to the last bit. Curl your back toes under. Inhale and exhale. Straighten your back knee off the mat. Lift your hips two inches and shift your hips to the right. Press your left heel down and now look forward from your sternum in the center of your chest. Lengthen your spine forward and soften your hands. Beautiful. Put your back knee on the floor. Set your hands. Inhale. Lift your hips and exhale to downward facing dog. And again, take a couple breaths here. Inhale, stretch your arms. Exhale, back into your legs. Breathe. Now, last lunge. Look up and inhale, step your right big toe to your outer right wrist. Exhale, bend both knees, bring your back knee to the mat. Look over your left shoulder, check the alignment. Look at your front foot, make sure your heel's down. The entire bottom of your foot is flat. And then, come on up. Take both hands to your right knee. If that puts pressure on your left knee, the back leg, you could pad your knee, you could fold your sticky mat, you could put a blanket there. But use your hands now on your knee to help guide your knee forward and also use your hands to help you lean back. Drop your shoulders any amount. Lift your chest and breathe. Soften the front of your throat, and now keep your right hand on your knee. Take your left thumb to the crease where your buttocks meets your thigh. Get your thumb in the crease. Hold your leg with the rest of your fingers. Nice deep inhale, and as you exhale, roll the skin forward. Drop your right shoulder, lift your chest, and if you feel stable, look up or back. The balance is in your front heel pressing down and the top of your back foot staying rooted. Very nice. Now look forward. 
Take a couple of breaths here. Drop your shoulders away from your ears and now lean forward. Take your hands to the floor inside your right leg. Curl your back toes under and exhale. Step back to downward dog. Keep breathing. Inhale as you stretch your arms. Exhale back into your legs. And now the last side. Look up. Inhale. Step your left big toe to your outer left wrist. Exhale, bend both knees and bring your back knee to the mat. Look over your right shoulder to check the alignment of your back leg. Look at your front foot, keep your heel down, outside edge of your foot in line with the long side of your mat, and then come on up. Take both hands to your knee and put the heels of your hands at the edge of your knee and bend your knee as much as you can. So as long as your heel stays down, as long as your knee stays in line with your toes, you can bend your knee as much as you can because what's letting your knee bend has nothing to do with your knee and everything to do with your psoas. Now keep your left hand on your left knee, take your right thumb to that crease where your buttocks meets your thigh, grab that back leg, nice deep inhale, and as you exhale, internally rotate your back leg. Roll the skin forward and then drop your left shoulder because it often comes up. As you press into your front heel, lift your chest, and if you feel stable, look up. Keep breathing through your nose. If you want, you can look back. Again, just keep your balance. Stay rooted in your front heel and press through the top of your back foot. Keep your eyes open and breathe. Beautiful. Release. Lean forward. Take your hands to the inside of your left leg. Curl your back toes under. Inhale. Lift your hips. Exhale. Step back to downward facing dog. And breathe. Take a couple breaths here. Now make sure your hands are your shoulder width apart. Your feet are your hips width apart. Relax your head. Open your eyes. Good. Complete your exhale. Look up and inhale. Step or walk both feet to your hands. Look up. Exhale as you fold in. Head towards your legs. And then bend your knees. We'll finish B. Utkatasana. Look up. Hands meet. Exhale. Samastitahi. Straighten your legs. Hands to your side. Beautiful. Now you're going to lay down on your back. Yay. Setubanda Saravangasana. So lay down on your back. Bend your knees. Get your heels as close to your bottom as you can. Separate your feet about the width of your hips. Parallel your feet. Place your hands on your thighs. And then inhale. Lift your pelvis up. Come on your tippy toes. Interlace your fingers under your back. Rock from side to side, then bend your elbows, release your hands, and get your hands under your hips. So the heels of your hands are under the rim of your pelvis. Your fingertips point towards your belly button, and if you can descend your heels, do that. Feel like you're squeezing your knees towards each other. And see if you can lift the entire front of both feet off the floor. Now, if this alignment bothers your knees at all, turn your feet out. Now to come out, lift your heels off the floor, release your hands, and slowly lower your bottom to the mat. Take a few breaths here, have your hands on your belly, soften your jaw, let's do it again. Draw your heels in close to your buttocks, exhale all your air, inhale, up you go. Lift your pelvis off the floor, press your thighs towards your knees, then interlace your fingers under your back like halasana, rock from side to side. And this is the second position. Press your arms to the floor and lift your pelvis higher. If this is difficult, if you feel like you have no leverage, go back to the first hand position with your hands under your hips. And see if you can lift all 10 of your toes and then release, lower your bottom to the floor and breathe. Very nice, lift your feet off the floor and hug your knees to your chest and then release and wrap your arms around the back of your thighs. This is to relieve your sacrum. See if you can squeeze your legs to your belly, hold your elbows, and then bend your knees like you're squeezing your arms with your legs. Flex your feet to release any tension in your sacrum. And then release that grip, take your knees from the outside, roll a little from side to side, and now roll to your side and come on up. So now, we're going to do a twist. We're going to do it on your back, and we're going to use a couple props. So you are going to take your bolster, put it on your mat. I like to put a blanket on top of my bolster because my bolsters can be a little soft. You know, if yours is really firm, you don't necessarily need it. Okay, but use that. And then take your belt, 
you're going to buckle your belt so you make a loop with the belt okay and we're going to use the belt to keep our legs together so once you've buckled the belt you get make a little circle there you go and come on to the bolster so you're going to get your pelvis on the bolster and you're going to put your back your shoulders your upper back on the floor but first belt your legs so put the belt at the widest part of your calves tighten it so your legs are together tight enough that your legs stay together without putting any pressure on your knees or your ankles good now you're going to lay back if you haven't already and make sure your head and shoulders are on the floor lift your feet stretch your arms out to the side take a nice deep inhale and as you exhale twist take your knees to the right keep your feet lifted turn your head to the left with an inhale lift your knees and head to the center exhale lower your knees to the left keep your feet flexed and lifted now turn your head to the right breathe into your right arm and switch inhale take your knees and your head to the center exhale twist Ardha Jatara Parivartanasana feel your right foot push your left foot higher then inhale up exhale twist to the left turn your head to the right again inhale lift your legs to the center exhale twist to the right knees to the right look to the left inhale back to center and exhale knees to the left turn your head to the right keep your feet higher than your knees now inhale onto your back and slowly make sure that your pelvis is fully supported straighten your legs if the belt slips or loosens retighten it now see if you can straighten your legs this is Viparita Karani on your back okay, so your sitting bones are just beyond the bolster stretch your arms out to the side point your toes that's it point your toes and straighten your knees stretch your legs now when your hamstrings are tight uh, your legs might start to shake your feet might start to move towards your face if you need a rest you can always bend your knees otherwise you're working on keeping your heels over your sitting bones and so if you do need the rest you bend your knees and then go back all right and see if you can take your feet away from your face and lift your chest press your shoulders down stretch your arms out to the side often when you do Viparita Karani we have a wall to support the legs so this is a more active form of Viparita Karani which strengthens your abdomen and that's what we want we want to strengthen our abdomen open our hips so our spine can be more free so straighten your knees and stay here breathe through your nose soften your jaw your teeth your tongue your lips now loosen the belt so bend your knees shimmy your legs if you need your hands to loosen the belt do that take your feet to the floor bring the bottoms of your feet together Baddha Konasana open your knees so your pelvis stays on the bolster just let your knees open relax your inner thighs your groins take your arms out to the side and again keep breathing through your nose soften your belly so your pelvis stays supported Baddha Konasana is the bound angle so the bind is the fact that your feet are together breathe through your nose keep the back of your neck long the front of your throat soft soften your jaw and now slowly bring your legs together if the belt's still on your foot take it off and then straighten your legs so keep your pelvis on the bolster and let your legs relax when they're relaxed they naturally roll out to the sides so your pelvis is elevated your head and your feet are below your pelvis so it's a little bit of a back bend here but very supported keep breathing through your nose soften your jaw your teeth your tongue now to come out bend your knees feet on the floor take your arms over your head and roll to either side to come off the bolster now press yourselves up from your side and find a comfortable seat uh, you can sit on the bolster the blanket whatever works just make sure that your hips are higher than your knees find a comfortable seat sit up tall and take your hands into jnana mudra so join your thumb and forefinger together straighten the other three fingers away from you straighten your elbows sit up nice and tall lower your chin and breathe 
Let the gaze be softly down at the tip of your nose or into your lap. This is the mudra of knowledge, of wisdom, of intuition. So breathe through your nose, soften your jaw, your teeth, your tongue, and then take your hands into your lap. Place the right on top of the left, palms up. Close your eyes and lower your chin. And breathe through your nose. Soften your jaw. Get steady. And you can stay here for a few breaths. And then you're going to make your way to Shavasana, which is the final resting pose. So when you're ready, you can lift your head and come off your seat. Lay down on your back and use whatever you like. Maybe you want a blanket folded for your head. If your lower back feels sensitive, you can put the bolster under your knees. I'm going to do that. So when you do that, when you do put a bolster under your knees, just make sure your heels touch the floor. And then go ahead and lay down so your pelvis, your back on the floor. Take your arms at your side and close your eyes. Now for the sake of this video, of this practice, uh, we're not going to stay in Shavasana very long. If you want to stay longer, you could turn it off now and stay in Shavasana as long as you like. And, but just drop in. You close your eyes, soften your jaw, your teeth, your tongue, your lips. Soften your belly. Breathe through your nose so your upper back is supported with the floor. Soften the front of your throat. Lengthen the back of your neck and let go. So Shavasana is the final resting pose. Let go everywhere and breathe. Now slowly begin to wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, roll your ankles and your wrists if that feels good. Stretch your arms over your head, stretch yourselves long. So whatever you do to come out of Shavasana, wake yourselves up, stretch your arms and legs, then let your body go limp. Bend your knees one at a time. If the bolster's there, just push it away with your feet. Roll to your side and slowly come up from your side using your top arm. Find a comfortable seat. Join your palms together in front of your heart. Close your eyes. Aloha and namaste. Thank you very much. Have a beautiful rest of your day. I'll see you next time.